Mm -hmm. So Judy mentioned uh, Brother David Stendhal Rest, and I wanted to um, tell a story about him because he, the book that, uh, actually he was on the video you saw last time, and he tells a story that he was trying to live gratefully, and he took this workshop on how to do it, and the whole idea was that you were to write two thank you notes every morning before you left your house. You had to write two thank you notes, and he went, oh, no problem, you know, I can do that. And then the workshop leader said, but you can't leave the room until you feel the gratitude. <laughs> okay, he said, that's a lot harder, right, than just writing, how, think about yourself writing a thank you note. Okay, he said, you can't leave that room. And I'm thinking, you probably stayed in that room for quite a while. <laughs> you know? So what we're talking about is living it, you know, living gratitude. That's what Judy was talking about. It's not a head thing. It's about embodying the energy of thank you. You know, I think authentic appreciation is what I can think about. And I'm thinking of the first time that I ever really, really felt it. And I can remember, um, you know, just, you know, feeling grateful, right? Your mom and dad, you know, when you're young and stuff. But I remember a specific time when I was a kid and I, we lived in a small town in um, eastern Washington. And it was apple country and it was cold and really cold. And I remember getting left at school. Um, I don't know, I lost my ride or something, you know, I, they left me. And my girlfriend and I walked home and it was snowing. And so cold, I don't know, I mean, how many times have you been cold and wet and hungry and had to go to the bathroom and tired, everything, and I was, we had to walk like two or three miles. And I remember just went, oh, you know, I'm a self proud you know how bad that must have been, you know, so I was just like shivering. And one of the neighbors stopped opened the car door and I could just feel the heat, right? The heat come in and I just sat down and I was like, oh. And I can remember this day, you know, the gratitude that I felt for being able to get into that car and to that woman. I just, I, I wanted to just hug her and, and love her. And I, and I thought about, you know, that was probably the first time I, I could embody this feeling of, oh, thank you, thank you, you know, this is so important to me. And, and then I was reading as I was doing um, uh, this talk, about this Japanese word. It's a Japanese kind of tradition, and the word is on, O-N. And what it is, it's, it's, a, um, it's what the Japanese, at least some of them, feel when you do something. You, you probably know this because you hang out with, um, mm -hmm. with Isuku and Yoshi. They come here, and I, and I think that they do this. It's this appreciation that you have to give back, right? It's like you, like, like I thought about that lady, I just wanted to hug her and I wanted to thank her and give back. And that's what the Japanese live. You know, when somebody does something for them, I know if I do something after a talk sometimes, they'll come up and they'll just, she makes stuff for me and she hands it to me. It's like they have to give back. And that's what we're talking about is, is having this, this whole energy that runs through you of pure gratitude for life. And what Brother <coughs> David says, is that, you know, we don't just have it, that we have to cultivate it, that it's an everyday practice. It's not something that you just say, I'm gonna be grateful. You know, I'm gonna do a gratitude journal. Stacy talked about a gratitude journal that you started and stopped. I've done that a million times in my life. I started one for, you know, a week or two and then I stop it. If you really want your life to be better, to really, you know, live in the energy of gratitude, you need to do the gratitude journal all the time. You need to cultivate the capacity to feel grateful for everything in your life. Everything is what he said. And when you do, you know, your life shifts completely. I, I'm thinking, and I, was gonna, I haven't talked to you about this yet, but I do think that we should start a class on gratitude. We, it's amazing the shifts that people have after using this practice and walking the world in complete gratitude. You know, um, Martin Epo, I love him. What he says is that if we live long enough, deep enough, and authentically enough, that gratitude then becomes a way of life. It becomes just a way of life. It's not just, oh, I'm so thankful for you. What a wonderful song you did. It's that I love your song, and I want to hug you. And I'm saying, thank you for that song. Yes. You know? Thank you, Robert, for, you know, your awesome playing. You know, it's like, wow. You know, that, that's gratitude, is to embody it and to love it. You know, we're used to what somebody, I, I read this thing called the food chain gratitude, the food chain gratitude, and I think that's kind of interesting. It's like, well, I'm not as bad off as, as uh, this person, so I'm grateful, right? So that person's, you know, doing really bad. You look at the victims that, in, on, um, victims, I don't even like the word, but this, the hurricane, and then you go, oh, that's not, there for the grace of God go I. That's gratitude, and I guess that's okay, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a living energy, 
And that living energy is a live quality. Gratitude is actually an alive quality in you. It's in you from the moment that you took birth. And it takes the practice of gratitude to do that. It's being thankfully, absolutely thankful for everything in your life, everything. Authentic appreciation, I love that. So how do we go from you know this life of complaining? And I'll tell you, you know, you don't think you're a complainer. I don't know if you're a complainer. I'm talking about myself here. I think I'm not a complainer, but sometimes I hear myself. I, I thought about that the other day. Well, I don't complain. I'm grateful for everything. You know? <laughs> and, and, and then I, I kind of looked at my day. Can I do a reflection sometimes at my day and go, okay, you know, what did have this day this do? How did I did I talk about anybody? Did I do anything, you know, that I need to make amends? And I remember sitting at that bail office and talking a mile a minute about how much I hated that job that day. And I, I sat as fires. I sat as fires and I told you guys I was miserable with uh, having to do data entry. I don't like all that data entry and stuff. And, you know, and then I thought to myself, this is what we're talking about. We have the capacity to shift and to find the good in everything. To, to shift, you know, where, see, where do we place our attention? You know, where do we place our attention? Is it on the negative, what's wrong with your job? And how often do we talk about it? And then as we talk about it, it starts to get bigger and then the other person talks about their job and you're, here you are having this big, you know, match about how awful everything is in your life. You know, but we have the choice to say, oh my God, I have a job. You know, I can work when I want to. You know, it's not that bad office. Well, you know. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We get to choose how we see it. And see, that's this practice that I was talking about that I'd like to do this class on Nikon. You probably know what Nikon is. It's that Japanese way of looking within and being grateful. And, and Greg Ketch is his name, or Greg Kretch. He's a Zen Buddhist teacher, and he's the one that teaches Nikon. And what he says is that there's, um, there's a way that you can develop a habit to attention. And he says you have to do it in three parts, and it's notice, Notice what's around you. Notice when you're griping about what's going on in your life, about your job and that stuff. Reflect. Do an inner reflection on where you are in life. You know, how are you feeling about something? And then express your gratitude. So there's three parts. And that's why I think it, 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 this could be a year-long class. could be another year to live. It's so, so powerful, you know. Um, but he says, notice where you place this attention. You know, when I, I'm thinking about, you know, when I was telling you about when I was griping about my job. Then yesterday, Mickey came over. He's my um, daughter's father-in-law. And he's kind of a negative sort of guy, you know? And so I asked him how his day was, and I wrote this down. And he says, oh, I, you know, I got up in the morning, and I had this long phone call. It made me late for work, and then the traffic was really bad. You know, then I was out of gas, and then I got to the gas station, and the gas prices are really high. That was like in the first five minutes. First five minutes, you know? And as I was thinking about this talk, I was thinking, okay, you know, that happens sometimes. That, that's true. Gas prices are high and, you know, there's traffic. But what if we shifted it? If we have this, this um, attitude of gratitude or this absolute thanksgiving in us, this attitude of thanksgiving, you know, why can't we say, okay, you know, I got to talk to somebody I haven't talked to for a long time. You know, yeah, the gas prices are high, but I got the money at least to be able to put a couple bucks in. You know, a lot of people don't have that. You know, I mean, there, there's so much to be thankful for that we forget, you know, we, we, we just forget how incredibly grateful that, or how good we have it, how good that we really have, it. especially right here, you guys, right here, Orange County, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You go outside, I, I looked out my window and oh, the hummingbirds were out there, and I thought, I don't even have a thing to write about, and, and I don't think any of us do. If we cultivate this practice of gratitude, we can live it. We can feel it every day. Yeah, we have those days maybe when you know, you're not feeling it, but we can get over that. We can get over it with a shift, with a shift. You know, I, I think about, you know, we've been given this incredible gift of life in a, this precious human birth. We talk about precious human birth, but I'm talking about embodying it, about feeling the gratefulness of being alive. You know, won't always be right here, right now. It won't always be. And the more we get present, the more that we, we live where we are. And by live, I mean notice. Notice where we are. Notice we're here. We're on our seat. We're looking at pictures. Oh, i got to talk about that now. But uh, we've we got to notice stuff. See that up there? 
That is, a, um, they're Chinese fortune sticks. Okay, and I have this big box of red fortune sticks on my desk. Right, so I have kids come in and out all the time because my kids have friends and stuff and they come in. And that's the first thing they grab because it's shiny and stuff. And they play with it. And there are these sticks and my baby little granddaughter, Ava, she throws them all out and then she puts them back in the box. Um, Lily, you know, she like makes soup with them and she does all this stuff. She's real present, real present with it. You know, she, it's like they really appreciate life. Eden takes it out, he's six, seven now and he plays um, swords with it. So they all do something with it. My point being is that whenever an adult walks by, they just walk right by it. You know, but you know, it's just, what is it? Just another thing. You know, I don't care. I'm not noticing it. Kids know how to notice stuff. They know how to notice and be present with life. And really, that's what we're talking about here. That's what gratitude is. That's what appreciation is. It's noticing. It's being present with life. It's reflecting on where your attention is and then being it in the world, expressing it in the world. So that's what our call today, you know, is to you, is to, to express it, you know, find out, cultivate this capacity, you know, for gratitude. And it takes work, you know, it takes work because it's a choice, you know, you, you got to drop. When you, when you start to judge something, just take your head, no, you know. I think in the old days, it used to be cancel, cancel, you know, or something, you know. And, uh, you know, it means just shift. You know, be grateful. Make yourself be grateful. And you'll see such a shift in your life. You know, we, we don't have to, to live this life of negativity. We don't have to do it, you know. So this Thanksgiving, whatever you're doing, Judy mentioned it, if you're alone and decide to be alone, be so grateful. If you don't want to be alone, tell somebody here. And there's people here that would love to have you. I know that. You know, if you don't have a place to go, let us know. Um, but put your attention where you are. Be where you are. You know, don't be in Italy while you're here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> be right here. Be right here. I say that because I was in Italy the other night as I, as I was looking through um, our kitchen. So, my prayer is that we feel that incredible love that we are. Because that love is gratitude.